Hi, and welcome to another White Boy Wednesday. I'm Ross Barrett. I'm the Senior Manager of Security Engineering at Rapid7, and today we're going to talk about the recent open SSL vulnerabilities. Um, there were six of them, I believe, released on Thursday. The two we're going to focus on are the man in the middle and the DTLS overflow. Uh, the other ones are denial of service attacks, and we're not going to go into too much detail of them, but they're all important, and you should patch it against the wall. So quickly to kick it off, we'll talk about uh, CVE 2014-0224, which is the, the man in the middle attack. It's getting a lot of attention in the press right now. Uh, quickly, what a man in the middle attack is, it's, well, it's an attack that allows somebody, if they've gained control of a component in the middle of your communications, to intercept, eavesdrop, and protect, potentially alter your communication with another party that would otherwise be encrypted. So a real world scenario for the average user is you're using your web browser to do your banking or you're using your web browser to access your Gmail or Yahoo Mail or any sort of web mail to talk to your friends and family. Um, those things are normally encrypted. You may not even notice it. But in this case, with a, if, the type, if both your client, the web browser, and the server are vulnerable at this particular version of the OpenSSL product, then uh, a, malicious, a malicious attacker who had some way of getting into the middle of your attack, into the middle of your communications, could, could intercept and alter. Um, that is very different from Heartbleed, where while Heartbleed disclosed information, once the exploit script for Heartbleed had been circulated, basically anybody in the world could fire it away and um, gather information as sort of in bulk from vulnerable systems. In the case of the, this attack, uh, it's, it would require a much more targeted approach for somebody to, to actually exploit this. Um, the ironic thing is that uh, where, because of Heartbleed hit three weeks ago and everybody rushed to patch everything, this vulnerability, which requires both the client and the server to be at the more recent vulnerable versions, is actually probably more widespread than it would have been if Heartbleed hadn't hit and caused everybody to patch recently. The world's a funny place sometimes. Um, the uh, Bruce Shire referred to Heartbleed as an 11 on a scale of 1 to 10 in terms of its severity. This is probably more like a 6, give or take. Uh, it would require a very targeted approach for somebody to take advantage of it, and you're less likely to see it actually impacting you. On the flip side, um, for an organization defending, if, if you were being hit by Heartbleed, you could see the, the exploit code coming in, and you could see data going out if you were monitoring via packet capture or via your IDS, IPS system. Um, for an organization affected by this situation, they might not be able to detect that the, that the session is being intercepted. And so it would look like normal traffic, but it might be altered or it might just have been uh, breached. Um, the other vulnerability we want to talk about is the, the DTLS, is the overflow in DTLS. Now, I've worked in the vulnerability industry for eight years and I had to look up what DTLS was, my bad. Um, DTLS is really just the TLS protocol implemented over UDP, so it handles things like uh, the session getting out of sequence and packets not arriving reliably, which are otherwise accounted for in normal TLS sessions. Um, in this case, and if you've ever written any exploits, that kind of, oh, we have to gather things up and rearrange them code tends to be a really ripe, fertile ground for overflows. So um, similar technologies have been overflowed before and will be again. Um, in this case, this technology isn't used in the sort of browser to website uh, communications that you see norm that would be your normal web traffic. Uh, it's instead used in things like VPN technologies. And so that might be something that your comp corporation has given you to connect to corporate resources when you're not on site, or something that a company uses to connect two of their two or more of their you know, remote locations, ge you know, geographically distributed locations. Um, in both cases, the answer is to patch. Uh, the question is where your patches are going to come from. For the man in the middle issue, you know, m most of the Linux vendors have put out this, and this is mostly going to affect Linux people because it is OpenSSL. Most of the Linux vendors have issued patches. So Red Hat, Debian, SUSE, the patches are all out there. Run and update all, and you or an RPM get or whatever patch manager you use, and you should be all right. Um, for people who have vulnerable hardware that's running a vulnerable version of OpenSSL in the, as possibly like their VPN concentrator on the perimeter. Um, that's going to be a high priority asset. It's something that's exposed because it, by definition it's a perimeter device and you may end up having to wait for your vendor to provide you with a firmware update. So that's something to look out for. Find out if your devices are using this technology, if they're using this implementation of this technology and talk to your vendors for the patches as soon as possible. Thanks for joining.